you know when you get a phone call early in the morning, you're automatically like, what's, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. um, but this was a knock at 4 a.m. and we flew out of bed. And I had that sinking feeling in my gut. I knew something was wrong. It was the state trooper um, asked, do you know Shamaya? Sometimes what seems like the end is really the beginning. I'm gonna take you behind the curtain of my life and my friends are gonna tell their stories too. I thought my life was over when I got molested as a child. Then I got pregnant at 17 and my drug addict ex-husband held a gun to my head. But only God could give me the life that I have today and you can have that too. We're going from the pain to the promise in a real, raw and organic way. Are you ready? Let's go. On the road to Hana. Around hiking trails today. I'm in the beautiful state of Hawaii. We're hiking trails in Maui on the road to Hana and we got off on this trail because it said there were these twin falls. And what a waterfall is, is all this water that just gets stuck in one place until it gets released. And when it gets released, it gets released in a smaller spot. So it comes through with like just more velocity and more passion and it out faster and harder than it would. And I got to thinking about emotions. Because sometimes we pen up all these emotions and they're stopped up and they're stuck on the inside of us because something hurt us, some pain on the inside. So we said something, lost something, lost a lot. And what do we do with all that on the inside of us? What do we do with grief when I come? And the answer is a lot of us, we hold it and we don't know what to do with it. And sometimes it comes out like really fast and really hard in a space that we don't want it to. And that's not how God wants us to process. Things move in our lives, things change in our lives, and we always have quite the solid rock <laughs> beneath our feet, beneath it all. There's a healthy way to process grief. a healthy way to feel your feelings and move on and start flowing through life again. And that's why I invited my friend Shari Thomas. Shari is from the Bahamas and she's a beautiful woman. And she got a phone call one day. The phone call changed her life. But this is what I want to encourage you because you watch the show today. There might be pain in life, but God's going to use it for purpose. I had a lady reach out to me yesterday. She's from Texas and she said, my grandson is eight years old and he's in the hospital. He fights potters. And so he's had all these troubles anyway, and he started having these seizures, and now he's in ICU. I really need you to pray. And so I reached out to my prayer partners, and we all started praying. And this very morning, I got a text. She's like, you're not going to believe what happened. My grandson's come out of ICU, and listen to what the doctor said. He said as he was regaining consciousness, as he was coming back, he's had trouble with his speaking and words he choose, and he's using words he's never used before in his entire life. He's still getting some of his balance back, but the doctor said that these seizures might have opened up a part of his brain that has never been. Here's what I want to open up your brain to. What if God can open up a part of your heart, a part of your life, a part of your brain, a part of your future that's never been opened before? He didn't cause it, but what the devil meant for evil, God would use for your good. Fierce, fun-loving, and bold. Waterbender. A water pick. <laughs> I always wanted to be a DJ. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't dance. That is awesome. <laughs> I couldn't think of a dance and my kids are gonna kill me when they see this. Oh my God. You know what I like about my friends? I like the fact that they'll sit here with me and with you and they will talk about, not just like, I don't know, there's great stuff on TV, I guess. Okay, I don't like most of the stuff on TV, but I do like when I get in a good conversation. And there's something that a lot of people need to talk about, but we don't know how to talk about. And so today, we're gonna 
we're gonna talk about it. And so my friend Shari Thomas is gonna talk with me about some things that happened with your sister. And you're from Relevant Kingdom Center. You, you and your husband pastor in Bahamas and Florida. You yes. co-authored a couple books. You're a worship leader, which I am insanely jealous about the fact that you can sing and I cannot. <laughs> um, and you, you've been through some brave stuff. Yes, um, so it was right before COVID hit, uh, 2020. Um, my sister passed away, which was April 1st. Talk about April Fools. Mm. It wasn't an April Fools, you know. Um, but it was so sudden, mm -hmm. um, so tragic that it just it just took everybody by surprise, mm -hmm. and I was just shocked. I couldn't believe that my youngest sister, my only sister, mm. was no longer with me. Um, I, I was devastated. I couldn't couldn't get over it. So so what happened? Um, so she was traveling after work um, mm -hmm. on the highway, and she stopped by a friend's house. And on her way back home, um, the car flipped mm. a couple times, and she was ejected from the car. Um, taken to the hospital, and she passed at the hospital. Um, we weren't able to be there with her while mm. she was, you know, taking her last breath, which was really upsetting for me. Um, and I just felt so disconnected, it, it, you know, like why wasn't I there with her? Mm -hmm. um, you know, people who were in the hospital, and it, it's different when you have a loved one that you know is passing, mm -hmm. and you can be with them, say your last goodbye, mm -hmm. but this was so sudden, we didn't get a chance to, you know, say goodbye. You didn't have a, or a chance to kind of emotionally prepare. Prepare, right. You know, sometimes people ask questions about God, like, God, why was this person sick? Or they say, why did this person go so quickly? Right. And I think God knows, like, He doesn't only care about the person, but He also cares about the family. Yes. And He gives families time to adjust to ideas of people being promoted to heaven. Yes. And then He knows that other families might be able to process. So how did you feel when that information came? Um, well, actually, it was like a, a knock on the door, and you know when you get a phone call early in the morning, you're, you're automatically like, what, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. um, but this was a knock at 4 a.m., and we flew out of bed, and I had that sinking feeling in my gut. I knew something was wrong. It was the state trooper um, asked, do you know Shemaya? And I said yes, and I was just in so much shock. I, I just literally just like, I bawled my eyes out. I'm surprised my kids didn't wake up. They were sleeping in the next room. and. I was just like, God, help me to process this. Mm -hmm. You know, help me to get past this shock. Um, but I think I went into a state of anger. Okay. You know, the stages of grief. Yeah. And I was stuck in anger for a little while. Mm -hmm. And I started to question God. Did you go to anger right away? I, f yes. Okay. I was angry. Mm -hmm. I was angry because my sister was 34. Mm -hmm. She had two young girls. Mm -hmm. And I felt like her life was cut short. Mm -hmm. And she had so much purpose to live still. And so I was so angry. I was like, God, I was partly angry with her mm -hmm. in a sense, which is kind of weird. But I was also angry with God. And I questioned God, like, why did you allow this to happen? And I think a lot of people go through those emotions and, and they question God. Why is this happening in my life? I remember when my husband, his dad passed. And we, we got, I don't know, almost like 30 days notice that something was even really wrong with him. Mm -hmm. um, he was supposed to have open heart surgery, which is kind of a big deal. Yeah. And we were at the hospital the night before surgery. And when we uh, were sitting there, it was kind of late in the evening, maybe eight o'clock at night. And a, a doctor walked in and said, we're not doing surgery tomorrow. You have a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. You have a brain tumor. Oh my God. And 30 days later, he was in heaven. Wow. So um, that kind of, gave us a little bit of time to adjust. Yeah. And my husband was so close to his dad. They were just, he was his pastor, he was his best friend, he was his dad. And so when he passed so unexpectedly at 56, mm -hmm. I think he was going through some of that, why God? My God. And the, it's so important to get in the house of God because we were at a uh, Branson Victory Campaign. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brother Copeland just, I don't know, he was preaching his message and out of nowhere he says, stop asking. Stop asking God why, and he was talking to my husband. Wow. He said, the secret things belong to the Lord, yeah. and you just have to trust Him. So did you survive COVID? Survive the last year? Survive your marriage? Survive not being able to find someone to marry? I know a lot of us are trying to just survive in life, and that's not what God called you to at all. No, God called you to thrive. I know what it means to thrive through adversity. I was molested in fourth grade, raped when I was 13 years old, 
Life had failed me, but I failed myself when I was in high school and became a pregnant, unwed mother. Doesn't sound like the person who's supposed to have this TV show, but you know what? God doesn't call the worthy, He calls the willing. And He's called you, not to survive, to thrive. It's why I wrote a real and organic book that is gonna blow your mind that I am so honest with you, but I did it intentionally to meet you in your pain and take you to the promise that God has for you that has never changed. I can't really put this down, Pastor Nicole. God is using it to um, dig out some areas of healing and faith that I did not know were there. Several chapters got to me, tug of war, glory days, bully bus for sure. Then I got to the wall chapter, and that one really stuck with me because I, I have some work to do. I ordered one book uh, to, to read, and I knew probably halfway into chapter one that I needed to order more. I needed this book to share. I want you to get it for free today at freethrivebook.com. Grief sometimes can be very hard. When we lose someone in our lives, it can cause grief because we can't bring that person back. But God is a healer and he's put people here on earth to help you through the process. You can heal from a healthy perspective if you pull on those that are your spiritual advisors, your spiritual leaders, your pastors, those that God has put around you to strengthen you. You can heal when you're in the multitude of others. I just have to trust that God knows some things that I don't. He sees a bigger picture. And although I might not like my happenings, my true joy still comes from Jesus. And I know that He has a plan and I'm gonna hold on to that. When, when we can't trace His hand, we can still trust His heart. So a lot of people are dealing with grief. Yeah. You know, eventually we all go to heaven and yeah. before us, usually our grandparents and our parents, you know, go to heaven and they get promoted. Um, but sometimes their promotion, we get a little salty about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and maybe even a little selfish because we're gonna miss them. Yeah. So how did you process the grief? Are you still angry with God? I'm at peace mm. right now, thank yeah. God. I love worship. And that brought me the most comfort. And God's word definitely brought me peace. But um, God reminded me that in His presence, there's fullness of joy. Mm -hmm. And so I found myself more in, in worship, more in song, and, mm -hmm. and just expressing myself to God, mm -hmm. um, just even talking to Him, like I'm talking to you, casual conversation, and just saying how I feel, you mm -hmm. know, because He's given us those emotions. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to not be okay. Mm -hmm. And so I would just say, God, I'm not okay today. You know, I just, I just need to cry. I need to let this out. Mm -hmm. And then I put on my worship music and just soak, mm -hmm. just soak in, in worship. And mm -hmm. it brought a sense of healing and peace. Um, and I was reminded when I was doing that, that God said, when your foundation is shaking, mm -hmm. you have to cover yourself. And, and this is actual, the CDC recommendation for when there's an earthquake. Mm. So the CDC recommends that when there's an earthquake, you number one, cover yourself. Mm. And so I took that and I said, God, that's a word right there. Yeah. Cover ourself in worship, cover yourself in prayer. Um, the second thing that you gotta do is drop to your knees. Mm. I mean, that's, that's a message in itself. Wow. I mean, you drop to your knees. And the third thing was hold on until the shaking stops. Mm. Our foundation may be shaking, but our foundation is on Christ and we will not fail when our foundation is on Christ. We will not crumble the pieces. God will take those pieces and he'll make us whole again. So the three things were cover, cover yourself, drop to your knees, and hold on until the shaking stops. Hold on. Yes. And God gives you something to hold on to. Yes. You know, God told me, worship is your warship. Mm. That's like good news, bad news, right? Because it's like, <laughs> well, why do you need to worship? Oh, snap, because it's really, there might be a, might be a war, I need to be prepared. So that's the bad news. But the good news is, is he told, tells us what the warship is. And when he gave me that word, I studied it out. And it said that the battleship is the most effective and feared piece of weaponry in mm. all of the military. 
So what does God give you? He gives you the most effective and feared piece of equipment in all of the spiritual army. Mm -hmm. Worship is your worship. And you can trust Him in that place because when you worship, when you're thanking Him, when you're praising Him regardless of the circumstance, He can fill you with His presence. He can fill you with a peace that passes all understanding. Jesus said, I give you peace. I give you my peace. Not like some peace, like a piece of peace. Like here's some peace, I'm doling it out. No, he said, I give you my peace. In that very same peace that carried him through the cross is the very same peace that's gonna allow you to endure the situation. Dare I say survive the situation. Dare I say thrive through and after the situation. It's okay to hurt and it's okay to grieve and it's okay to cry. Just don't let the enemy get you stuck there. It took a lot to get right here. So we did like this four and a half hour drive. We kept getting stuck behind traffic. We put on all our gear, we went on this walk, and it felt like, like it was kind of cool outside until we started walking, and then we realized it's humid and hot and we dressed wrong for this situation. Got here, we were pretty sweaty, sat down in the shade, and wow, <laughs> it was really refreshing. I needed to sit in this shade for a minute. And then I could feel the light shining on my face just a little bit, and I was like, I think God's shining down on me and smiling. I think that's what this moment is for you right now. You've been working really hard to get where you're at. Uh, it feels like a lot of work. The shade's refreshing, but it's a little bit dark and you just needed God's smile. And he sent me with this message. You know, about two days ago, I was out in a kayak and we were out in the ocean in Hawaii celebrating my 50th birthday. I know, tell me I look 29 my 25th wedding anniversary. And we're out there, there's not a ton of sea life. It's pretty dark blue ocean. And as I kept looking down, I kept thinking, is, is that an octopus? I, I, I think I see an octopus. And a guide finally came out there because David and I are out in this big ocean by ourselves in a kayak. And I said, what is this thing with all like these light rays coming up? Like, is this an octopus with like 20 arms? Did we find something? Is this bioluminescence? And he's like, let me see. He goes, no, that's your shadow. I was like, what? He's like, no, that's your shadow. Look behind you. I looked up and the sun was back there. He said, in the middle of the dark spot, that's your head. The light, that's the sun. He said, it's called Nimbus. I had never seen anything like this before. And I was like, what, what? I was just, I was like, surely he's lying to me. And all along on the kayak ride, I kept looking down into the dark, into the deep. I know your feelings are deep and I know it feels a little bit dark walking through grief and walking through loss. But there was this light around me the whole time I looked down into the deep. So I, I come back from that and I start reading my Bible and I read 1 John 4 verse 5. And it talks about how His life is in us. His light is in us. His peace is in us. And in the darkness, when you look around in the dark, it's His light shining out of us. And I looked down in the water and I was like, oh my gosh, that is what I saw all day today. I saw his light surrounding me when I was in this big ocean, when I'm completely out of control, a whale, a shark, anything could bump us over. I wouldn't be able to fix it. There would be this dark deep, but God. So we go hiking out looking for these waterfalls. <laughs> Talking about our, our emotion that has been dammed up, we're kind of pinning it up. How do we deal with that? How do we process it when we, when we lose someone, when we lose something? And then I find this place where man helped here. Like you can see some of the concrete between these rocks. I'm like, seriously? And I thought, why does man always try to help God do what he does? Because it hasn't rained here in five weeks and yet the water's still flowing. It hasn't rained here in five weeks, and yet as you look around, everything is lush and beautiful and green. The ocean is pH balanced. The edges are beautiful. The sand is clean. I can't keep a pool clean, and God can keep the whole ocean clean. The point I'm bringing home to you today is this. If God can figure out how to keep the ocean clean, if He can figure out how to keep the forest watered, if He can figure out how to feed the animals in the jungle, he can figure out how to heal your heart. 
trust him with it. Call out his name, look down into the deep and the dark and don't be afraid of what you see. I think you're gonna see this nimbus of light, his peace surrounding you and helping you heal. I love T12 and here's a couple of reasons why, is every month we learn something different. The month that stands out the most in my mind is the one where we talked about the mind. Because many people don't know this about me, I used to struggle with depression and suicidal thoughts. Mm. And with I've been praying and praying and doing the one yeah. on the mind with, with Joyce Meyer's Battle of the Mind book that you give us a book every single time you give us instruction. It's so amazing what it does to change the way that you think and the way that you feel in things that you could never imagine. If you would have told me even a year ago that I'd be who I am today, I would have told you you're wrong. I love Romans 12 and two. Do not be conformed to this world and all the stress everybody else is feeling, but be transformed, how? by the renewing of your mind. That's why we have come up with the T12 Transformation Program. It's a 12 month total life transformation. We're talking about your relational life. We're talking about your financial life. We're talking about your sex life. We're talking about everything. We go into teaching, reading, Q and A, books, studying. And at the end of 12 months, you have to introduce yourself to yourself because your life is so radically changed. It's a $997 program, but wait. We've had a lot of people partner with us so we can offer it for whatever you can pay. We're invested in helping you have your best year ever. Now that you've walked through this, do you feel more equipped? Like you can talk to people with more understanding yes, and compassion? Most definitely. Um, because a lot of times we don't know what to say to people who are going through things mm -hmm. until we kind of have that experience ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes you don't really need to say anything to someone who is actually grieving. Sometimes they just need like a hug or a touch or yeah. just, you know, just a warm smile. You know, they just need that nonverbal communication sometimes. And so I feel more equipped now that I could relate to someone who's actually grieving and going through a sense of loss. That's a really great point because when people come to you, you don't always know what to do. Right. So you don't have to say anything right and that can be encouraging it can be very encouraging because sometimes you just just want to know somebody's hearing you okay somebody's there listening and somebody's they acknowledge that you're in pain you know you don't always have to say i'm sorry mm. you know it, it wasn't your fault <laughs> 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 you know yeah that, that's a good point it is um what were some of the things that happened that brought you the most comfort so in this uh, season of my grieving, and I, I found a passion, um, I always had a heart for young women. Mm. I love young women. I don't have any daughters, but I grew up you know, with my sister, and I saw that she struggled with you know, low self-esteem, finding her identity, mm. and it birthed something in me. Mm -hmm. I wanted to help young women because I went through it too. I wanted to help young women find their purpose, mm -hmm. find their identity in Christ. Mm -hmm. And a lot of women struggle with that. Mm -hmm. And so this, her passing kind of reignited that flame yeah. in my heart to say, you have to share with young women because when she left her marriage, it was broken, like I said, and she came back home. This was right before she passed. She came back home to heal from that, to find herself again, to find out, you know, who am I, you know, outside of my marriage now. Um, and she was kind of lost. And so it, it kind of reminded me that you need to help inspire young women mm -hmm. to find their true passion and purpose in life. So actually her death was not in vain. No, it wasn't in vain. Her death was a seed. Yes. And God is bringing a harvest. Mm. And she's actually doing ministry Thank you, Jesus. in the earth. Wow. Uh, her legacy has birthed something. Yes. It's wild how God gets yes. life out of everything. That's powerful. Yes. Amen. Not in vain at all. I'm so happy that I can, you know, honor her in this. So there are a lot of women like your sister in a place of hurting mm. that are out there right now and they're thinking, I wish I had a big sister to tell me something. Yeah. Um, could you be their big sister for a moment? And what would you share with them if they're in a spot similar to your sister? Um, I just want to share with you that just remember that you are a 
masterpiece. God has put something in you that's so special. You're so unique. No one else on the earth is like you. And your identity, it's not wrapped up in any man. It's not wrapped up in social media. It's not wrapped up in anything but God. And if you find your purpose in God, you will find out your true identity. Just be encouraged. You know, in just a second, Shari's gonna pray with you, but before she does, I just wanna give you a word of encouragement. You are coming out of this grief. You're coming out of the dark into his marvelous light. Matter of fact, it says in Matthew 5, verse four, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. You're gonna be comforted. The peace of God is wrapping around you. I'm about to read you an email all the way from South Africa, and I love when you email me. Go to my website, nicolecrank.com forward slash let's talk, because I wanna hear from you. You know, it, it's so funny how the program translates all over the world. I actually got this message from Orlita right here, and it says, hey, this is Orlita all the way from South Africa. I watched your show on Faith TV, and I cried so much. I've been watching your show for about three months now, but this episode, it just inspired me to the capital M-A-X max. Thank you for sharing your life and your experiences with people. I'm 21 years old and everything on your show is super relatable and full of content for all ages. Watching your show, I know that God has great things planned for me, no matter how old I am, get this, or what my past looks like. Thank you for allowing God to use you to minister around the world. Oh, and the guests you invite are pretty awesome too. We only reached Olaredo at 21 years old, crying her eyes out, loving the program to the max because people like you help us do it. To everybody who's partnered with us, I wanna say thank you. And if you wanna help us with $20 a month, $50 a month, $100 a month, and some of you guys have sent gifts that have literally blown me away with the goodness of God and given us opportunities to go on stations we could have never gone on, secular, secular, secular station. It's because of you. You can just text this phone number right here and you can give, or you can go to nicolecrank.com forward slash donate. Or if you really wanna be cool, you can join my circle of friends. Go to nicolecrank.com forward slash circle. You get a free book at the beginning, you just pay the shipping, and then every month for $27.77, you partner with the program, you partner with me, you help me do ministry, and together we reach a lot of people, and I get to be on Zoom with you twice a month. How much fun is that? I'm really excited you're with me today. Now I want Shari to pray for you. Father, I thank you right now that those who may be experiencing grief, Father, will know that you are the greatest comforter that they will ever have. Father, I thank you right now that they will know that it's okay to grieve and to know that you have an ultimate plan for their life. And the greatest thing that they can do and honor those, those, those who have passed, Father, is to live out their life in purpose, to walk out legacy. Father God, I thank you right now that you'll comfort those who are brokenhearted. Thank you that you will take those broken pieces and make a beautiful masterpiece. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for watching The Nicole Crank Show. I'll see you next time.